Hello, today we're going to be doing grade three, unit one, sessions two and three. So you, you'd be on the very first unit one icon here, but let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Holy Spirit, you overshadowed Mary at the Annunciation, and Jesus was conceived in her womb. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now please overshadow us and let Jesus be conceived in our hearts and in our souls and our minds, and let us be truly the great saints that you created us to be, that we may always be happy with you forever in heaven, and may bring all our family to you, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All you holy angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we're covering two sessions. So in your book, we'll be covering from page 9 to 19. So if you click on Unit 1, um, we're going into Session 2. Nature and attributes. We're going to skip that part for right now. We're going on to the incarnation, which is um, just you, you can just draw a picture of God there. That's really not essential that you do that one. But um, because we can't really picture God, I mean, we can picture Jesus because Jesus is the Word made flesh, but God is a spirit. So we can't um, picture him in the way that we can picture another person. Okay, so um, if you open your book to page 11, okay, when it talks about the incarnation. Now, the incarnation means God taking on a human nature, which is what we mean when we said, we say the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Word with a capital W stands for Jesus Christ. So if you look at page 11 in your book, you'll see that it says, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, consubstantial with the Father. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. That's taken from the Nicene Creed, which we pray together at Mass on Sundays. So Jesus is one person. This is really important that you learn this. He's one person, one divine person. He's not a human person. He is a human being, but he's not a human person. There's a difference. Person is the answer to the question, who? So when we ask Jesus Christ, who are you? He answers, I am the second person of the Blessed Trinity. I am God. Okay, now what answers what a person is? Like for us, we are human beings. We are human um, we are human persons, embodied persons. Jesus is a divine person. He has a complete human nature, though, which he took on in the womb of Mary. So he's one person with two natures. And the two natures are divine nature, which is the nature of God, and human nature, which Jesus has always been God, but he hasn't always been man. He's, he was man from the time that Mary said yes at the Annunciation. Okay, and we're going to read the Annunciation in a little bit. But here on, in your um, activity, it says on the computer screen, Jesus came down from heaven and assumed a human nature to pay our debt of sin. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we too can be raised from the dead and see him and the Father in heaven. Okay, so you, um, in your book on page 11, okay, it says original sin must be beaten in two ways which original sin, remember, is the sin of Adam and Eve. So first of all, we must be forgiven and we must be fixed, um, healed, freed from concupiscence, which means that the tendency to want to do the wrong thing, um, suffering, sickness, and death. All those are fruits of original sin. If Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, none of those would have come into the world. But we inherit original sin because we descend from Adam and Eve, as does the whole human race. And so by baptism, original sin is taken away, but the weakness of it is not taken away. So Jesus forgives us original sin and all actual sin. Actual sin just means the sins that we commit. 
and we don't commit original sin, we inherit it. Okay, Jesus fixes our broken nature. Um, he gives light to our intellect and strength to our will by grace. Those are the two things that you can write on page 11. Okay, then on page 12 in your book, you can write a prayer thanking Jesus for becoming a man so that he could suffer, die, and rise from the dead to redeem us. Because see, only Jesus could offer that perfect sacrifice on the cross because only Jesus is the only human being who is God. We are, we are certainly not God. We are human persons, but Jesus is a divine person. He's one of the three divine persons. He's the son. And so when he took on a human nature and he offered it on the cross, it was God offering himself to God. So that's what, what happens at mass and why the mass is of infinite value. It's God being offered to God. So now if you go to, um, if you pause the video and um, you tr put in order the life of Mary strips, which are either on page 13 and 15 of your book, or um, there's a shorter version on the computer screen. And I'll, um, I'll give you the answers now. Okay, so on the computer screen, um, these are the answers in the correct order, but there's more, uh, in the book, there's more, more um, events. So I wanna answer it from the book rather than from the computer screen. So if you, uh, I just saw one that I hadn't seen. Wait, I have to just make one correction on mine. Okay, so that would be, okay, I think that would be number 11, okay. All right, so um, number one is gonna be the Immaculate Conception. That's when Mary was conceived in the womb of her mother, St. Anne, okay? At the moment she began to exist and God created her without original sin. So he made an exception to the rule when he created Mary because he was preparing her already at the moment of her conception for her exalted vocation to be the mother of God and the mother of the church and the queen of the angels. Number two, um, her betrothal to Joseph. Okay, she was betrothed, which means married to Joseph. Okay, that was number two. Number three was the Annunciation, which we're going to read the gospel account of in a few minutes. So that was when God sent the Archangel Gabriel to Mary to ask her to become the mother of God. And she said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. At that moment, the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and she conceived Jesus in her womb as a tiny embryo, as we all began to exist in our own mother's wombs as tiny embryos. All right, number four, Mary's visitation to Elizabeth. She went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Now you're gonna see here, there's a pattern of the five joyful mysteries of the rosary. Okay, so number five is going to be the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, which is the third mystery. The number six is the prophecy of Simeon, which is the fourth mystery, also called the presentation of Jesus in the temple. So when, Jesus, when Simeon prophesied that Jesus would be a sign of contradiction, he was prophesying already the crucifixion, even though Jesus was only six weeks old at the time, and that a sword would pierce Our Lady's heart so that the thoughts of many hearts would be revealed, that she would be the mother of us all, and she'd be able to receive into her immaculate heart all our anxieties and woes and bring them to the Lord for healing. Number seven is gonna be the flight into Egypt to save Jesus from Herod because Herod was trying to kill the baby Jesus. Number eight occurred when Jesus was 12 years old, the finding of Jesus in the temple at Jerusalem. Number nine, the wedding feast at Cana when, when Jesus performed his first public miracle by changing between um, 90 and 150 gallons of water into wine at his mother's request. His first public miracle at that wedding. Number 10, Mary with Jesus during his public life. Number 11, Mary at the cross. Number 12, Mary assumed into heaven to rejoin her son. Right, so those are um, important events in the life of our blessed mother. And then you can illustrate on page 17, you can illustrate uh, your favorite event in the life of our Blessed Mother Mary. And then on page 18 in your book, it says, how do I say yes to God at home, at school, and with my friends? Write those ways in the boxes. Okay, so those are different things you can write. And then on 
page 19, it says write a list of three talents that you have because you all, we all have gifts from God, different talents. And um, write a prayer of praise to God, praising God for his goodness and thanking him for the talents he has given you. And you should also um, ask God to help you to use your talents for his glory because the talents and the gifts God gives us are to help other souls get to heaven. All right, so now um, uh, your, your um, computer screen has enunciation role play. So that means if we were meeting in to get together as a class, we would um, divide this into parts like we do with the Gospel Players script book. But because um, we're just meeting through this video, I'm just gonna read the account of the enunciation to you. And then I'll send you, I'll try to send you a copy of the enunciation in parts. So that if you want to do it in parts with one of your family members at home, you can do that. Okay, so this is St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. When the angel had come to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When she had seen him, she was troubled at his word and kept pondering what manner of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace with God. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he shall be king over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How shall this happen, since I do not know man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore, the Holy One to be born shall be called the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, thy kinswoman, also has conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing shall be impossible with God. But Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. So that, that moment, Mary became the new Eve when she said yes to God, and the word became flesh. So God began his whole new creation, which will culminate in the glorious kingdom of heaven. So let's close with a Hail Mary and thank our Blessed Mother for saying yes to God and reversing the, the no that the first Eve said to him way back at the beginning. Mary is the new Eve and our mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, Queen of the angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.